Hey guys, it's Jillian and Miss Rika here. Rika is ready for her weekly Kong, for her weekly Q&A session. So today we have Miss Lucy Lane, the Queen of Balmain, with Zach, Lucy's owner. Um, if you are on YouTube and are big into dog videos, you, you might be following Lucy Lane. If you're not, definitely go to YouTube and check them out. They do amazing, amazing adventures. I personally love following along those adventures. So today we're gonna talk about German Shepherds versus Belgian Malinois. Let's see where our friend Zach is. Invitation has been sent. We are waiting for Zach and Lucy. And Rika's being a good girl. Oh. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Let me set this up. There we go. I've got all the camera equipment in the world and I don't have a little tripod on my phone. Can't have it all. Plus, be sharp. Oh, it's yeah, nice to see you in real time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See Lucy, the there we go. Aww. Is that working? There we go. Lucy. Hi, girls. How you doing? Aww. Wow, they're being so good. We need a screenshot of this. <sighs> it's a nice... Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Let's see if we can... Can you do it? You get it? Uh, I don't think my arms are long enough. I'll... Afterwards, I'll capture it. All right. Let's do one, Sick. two, three, smile. Yeah. <laughs> nice. There we go. There we go. All right. So how are you doing right, today? Look. We're good. How are you guys? All good. What time is it there? It is 11.15. Uh, 11.15 a.m. A.m., yeah. A.m. So is that 1,700 for you guys? It's 5 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. since we're talking about our daily lives, what is a typical schedule for you and Lucy? What's the day-to-day? -day? Typical... Well, there's, there's two typical schedules for us. So there's when I'm at work and then when I'm not. Because I kind of condense all my work days into like a part of the week and then I like to have a lot more free time. So, well, um, the typical, when I, my non-work days are pretty much what you see on the YouTube videos. We just plan adventures. We get out there and have some fun. Um, we will pick a spot and we'll go and we'll just record and obviously capture some highlights and, and that's about it. But a typical work day, so like a normal, a normal day that everyone else probably goes through is just, is, is, is quite normal. So it's, we get up, take Lucy for about an hour and a half walk, do a little bit of training, bit of obedience training. She'll go for a swim and then she'll take post on the, on the bed for about nine or 10 hours. And then, and then that's the day. So, so she has two, ex two extremes. She's pretty ideal, pretty chill, low maintenance. You can... Yeah, 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 she is, she is. It, it hasn't always been that way. It's kind of weird. Inside, we've brought her up. Inside is calm and quiet. On lead, walking outside is, is, is calm as well. But once the lead comes off and she's at the park or whatever we're doing, hiking or something, it's a complete, it's like flicking a switch. It's just crazy, yeah. How, how old is Lucy now? So she's two and a half. Hey. She's two and a half. So when um, did you start to see her mellow out? I think with Luce, probably oh, about probably about hitting about two years old. Okay. Um, yeah, but, but it, it kind of went, she mellowed out inside a little more, but then she also stepped up her drive outside, if you know what I mean. Like she's really good at reading situations. Like she just, inside is, is calm and relaxed, and then outside is... She just wants to work. She, she's a real snob as well. She doesn't want to play with dogs. She just wants dad and the ball. That's it. Or a tug. <laughs> and let's, let's go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I feel like... Sorry, you go. Um, I'm noticing that with Rika, we would play... We, I mean, we used to always play in the house, especially when it was so hot this summer. But now that yeah. it's cooling down, we're working on... Like, at the house, it's calm take that crazy energy, that hard mm. drive, save it for outside. Mm. It's just mm. your yeah. here. It's just not fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we'd have a very similar kind of lifestyle because you guys are like pretty like in a like city LA kind of thing. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Living in like an apartment and 
that, that's like us. Yeah, yeah. Like we're we're in a little house, but it's honestly it'll be smaller than most modern apartments. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have Biggest. a yard? Ah, uh, yeah, it's tiny. Lucy doesn't go in it. Okay, because a all. lot of people. Yeah, she, well, I mean, I feel like well, before we got Rika, we were really concerned about the yard situation. Like, she needs so much exercise. How are we going to get her that exercise we need? Well, she needs like without us having that space. Were you concerned about yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, I was at the start, but I was like, I had a lot of friends around me who were like really experienced German shepherd owners. Uh, and it really like, a, like a dog would get bored in a big yard all day on its own. Like it's, it gets destructive. Like, or well, I don't know for Lucy, like I'm only speaking for Lucy here, but, but um, with, with Lucy, she's, she's not, she's not interested at all. She just wants to hang out with the pack. And then if, if we're not home, she wants to stay inside. And then, but once we go out though, it's the, the, the switch flips and it's let's go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, at the start, I wasn't too worried about it, but I can see people's concern because I think traditionally we're, we're brought up to believe your dog needs a big yard and you know, the, you know, the white picket fence and all that nonsense. And but that's not the case. I, I think it's the quality of time you have indoors and outdoors, which, which makes up for it. So. Mm -hmm. And is yeah. Lucy your first dog as an adult? Like, if that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucy's our first dog. I think she's feeling betrayed right now because Mum just left. She's <laughs> like, Aww. why haven't I been walked yet? <laughs> is Lucy a mama's girl or a daddy's girl? Depends what time of the day, and depends what she wants. Okay, so so it, in the morning it's dad because I generally do the training and, and exercise with her in the morning. But in the evening, mum feeds her and she gets to snuggle with mum and Netflix because I work till pretty late at night. So, so she, it, she's smart. She knows who she needs to manipulate at the time. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> the working dog, they know how to work in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so exactly. Funny. So there were yeah. a lot of people that asked, that they're torn between German Shepherds or Belgian Malinois. So I wanted to just wrap about um, the two breeds and mm. kind of figure out what is the right dog for a particular person. So, yeah, you that. That's a that's a broad question. Depends what you want to do, and um, you, yeah, okay. you lead, you lead the way here. Let's go. All right. So, um, how much training do you do with her? Or okay, yeah, how much training? Okay, so. I suppose at the, like, like in general, like at the moment or like at the start or. Uh, I think when you were raising. Um, raising. So like. So. Well, eight to a year. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was, a, that was probably a lot, a lot more than now. Um, I, I kind of went down the road of, I wanted to expose her to as much as possible. I used every situation. So to, to even, even walks and things like that, going around the park or going down the street in the city, it was all training and exposure. So I kind of went a bit like probably silly with it. Like obviously we'd, we'd do our normal things. So we'd, we'd obviously be doing our boundary training at home and, and basic obedience and all that sort of stuff as well and, and utilising meal times as well. So there was no free food. Lucy worked for every little treat, every little meal she got. Um, it was like a, almost like a twenty four seven kind of thing for us that I kind of just delved into the into the lifestyle, mm -hmm. and then I also got the help of a really good trainer in Sydney. Here, he's actually in Brisbane now, master of puppies. He was an ex special forces dog handler, and fascinating. Like your mind will be blown when you start that you get to sit down and chat to a guy like that, and. Um, yeah, he he pretty much set me on a straight and narrow, and and we really had a really structured plan with obedience and, and boundaries and got to the advanced obedience stage, but I couldn't define an exact, like we did one hour a day, mm -hmm. seven days a week, because I kind of, we did all these multiple little sessions and cause I have quite a flexible work routine. I also, I use every, every spare moment pretty much, at least for the first six months from, from when we got it to six months old was just exposure, 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 training, 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 even taking Lucy, I'll go down to the local schools and get all the kids, six year old kids to poke her in the eye, pull her tail, just razz her up. Like I need her exposed and mm -hmm. to, to as much as possible. Yeah. So that's, so that's that. Yeah. They're like so that was, sponges. So that's good. They, they are, they are. 
They really are. And it, it's vital, man. Like, they pick up on everything. Okay, were you nervous so. when you brought Lucy around those little kids? No, no, because she was cute as. So. She was what? I was like, because she was so cute. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, no, no, not, not really, not really. Oh, they I just, um, yeah, she, she's a very, she's a very happy puppy. And she was so small, it's not, she couldn't really do anything. Like, so, like at the time, she's probably only 12 kilos or something. So, um, yeah, just the, oh, it, was, it was controlled, but I just let the kids go nuts with her and, and she just loved it. I feel like that's the biggest difference between German Shepherd and a Mal. So I grew up with a yeah. German Shepherd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it was very much my parents' dog. Like my German Shepherd, when I was a kid, he was wild. Like he would get loose, like, run around like all the kids in the neighborhood would like chase timber like it was just kind of like that was the dog's exercise but you know we had my mom had three kids and it's just a different situation um with mm. german shepherd their temperament is so much more chill whereas the malinois is so like can be very dangerous like when Rika is with little kids i find myself like oh my god you know and i want it to be supervised and like god forbid you know that little mm. that puppy bite she, uh, like, yeah like that's a big concern so yeah i suppose i suppose, I suppose in a sense as well i think lucy wasn't a super mouthy puppy um and we kind of got on to that very early on as well mm -hmm. so yeah we're, we're, we're lucky with that i think it was just a bit more of a personality trait of hers what um, made you want to get a german shepherd Oh, a couple of reasons, I suppose. One, I was actually attacked by a German Shepherd once a couple of years ago. I don't know, about three or four years ago now. It was, it was a beast, left a decent scar on my hip. Um, and my response to that was like, shit, that's a cool dog. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. Like, I, I was down for it. I was just, it was an interesting situation, but I, I could feel that, like, I was like, wow, this is a, this is a beast of an animal. So that kind of put on the radar for me. I was like, you know what? I think like a trained one of these would be really nice to have. Like, um, and then one of my good buddies also had a couple of German shepherds and I, I was just kind of around it, I suppose. Um, he had these two amazing, he's actually, he was a, an army dog trainer as well. And he had two German shepherds and he's just got a male now as well. So the, the three, but yeah, loves, loves dogs. Um, and we, we went for a big run up on Dye Beach one day and we're jumping off all these like little little rock pools and things swimming with the dogs which it, it was just a surreal experience and i just went man and because he has his dogs sharp as attack as well so i was just like you just kind of get draw sucked into it you know you're just like wow like because at the time i wanted to get a dog but i was looking at getting a rottweiler uh, they're cute yeah yeah they are they are and then i just saw these these two german shepherds man and um they they were family dogs but with with his knowledge and what he could do with them, I was just like, holy moly! It was it was impressive. So I just I just was like, wow, well, can't beat him. Join him. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So um, yeah. Okay. What made you get a male? So actually, Dave was the one that really was dying for a male. Like the last year, he's just been so obsessed, like showing me like videos and articles. Like we were reading up on this stuff bef way before we even were considering like actually getting a mouth. And then when COVID wow. hit, we were like, now's the time. Like we can actually yes. train her. COVID train puppy. Out. Yeah. And so mm. in April, we um, did all the research looking, we were looking for breeders, yada, yada, yada. And like, we found a breeder that was, um, that had a litter and yeah. And, and here we go. Our journey begins. Wow. That's that's awesome. Is 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 the male? I'm curious. That's a question of my own. Um, with male, so obviously with German Shepherds, you know, you've got a range of different lines. You've got your high drive working lines, your kind of medium to high drive West German show lines, and you've got your lower drive like American Canadian show line type dogs. Is is there that kind of range with males as well? So, like, do you have your higher drive males, your more family males, and things like that? Is that a thing with males, or are they all just psychos? I mean, it's definitely a thing. Like, there's people that get males specifically for dog sports or specifically for a family dog. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Our, our intent with Rika was to have is is to have a family dog. 
Um, mm. we, we were never thinking about, well, we, we did think about um, dog sports and all that, but like, but again, we don't have experience with dog sports. It, it's all learning. Mm. And then when we got Rika and we see her high drive and we're also like obsessed with her and training her and we see yeah. that she like, she, she just, she has a lot of drive and we think that she could go far and Dave and my personality trait, like once, when, once we're into something like we're all in. So mm, we would, mm. I mean, if we do get into it, I mean, I'm sure we'd go all in, but our goal with her is a family dog. Yeah, yeah. So, wow, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so good, good time. So I just also want to touch on, before you came on, I was talking about your YouTube channel, how you guys go yeah, yeah. all these amazing adventures. I know you have some military background, right? Yeah, yeah, I was in the Navy. Yeah, okay. nothing dog related though. But, but I think there's a certain um, characteristic personality trait for people that want working dogs. Do you think so? Oh, yeah, I suppose, I suppose. Having something intelligent. Um, yeah, it makes sense, possibly. I think it's the um, discipline structure, like, it's not just a dog that's just going to run around like frou frou. Like you have to really put um, rules and boundaries in line. And I think yeah, I yeah, yeah, like yeah. That that makes sense. It's funny. My wife actually says the first couple of months was like puppy boot camp here. So um, yeah, it's just a bit of a running joke. But yeah, I, I suppose I wasn't probably aware of that. But it ma it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, Dave is yeah um, super regimented um and i'm a little bit more flowy with it but with right yeah. when we came into our home we were like okay like this is what we got to do it's got to be structured so yeah 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 Dave can yeah. in that way so, <laughs> um one question i wanted to ask you was on um hip problems i know german shepherds have a lot of um yeah they benefits. do they do yeah. Yeah, um, I think, uh, oh, so with Lucy, we're really lucky so far, essentially. Um, I think with hip hop, I think the best way to deal with it is not get a backyard puppy for starters, as in don't get a backyard breeding job, do your due diligence and try and find a super reputable breeder that has a long history in breeding and something you can really look into because we've we've seen it even on, on Instagram and things, people who get puppies that do have hip dysplasia and it, it's, it's a horrible, horrible thing for the families, for the dogs. So I think the best thing is to try and avoid it as much as you can. Now with German shepherds, I'm fairly sure doesn't matter what type of shepherd working line, even like a West German show line, there's even from the top breeders, there's, there's no guarantee. There's always that slight chance they can elbow hip dysplasia can show its ugly head earlier on or later on in life. I think it's, it could happen. So I suppose the next best thing is management of it. Um, and you can use supplementation. We haven't really gone down that road with Lucy yet, but um, cause we don't really need to for, for the time being, but we, we will down the track. But what we do with Lucy is specific. We just keep her super lean and she's actually a very, uh, very strong swimmer. A lot of her exercise is actually around swimming. That's hence all the beach trips and things we do. So I'd say probably 65% of her like real vigorous activity is in the water, which is low impact for her body. Mm -hmm. um, and like a lot of sand running and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's how we manage it. Just trying to build that strong, like skeletal structure with, with swimming and, and keeping them lean is the most important thing. People can kill their pups with kindness. Too much food is, is bad. Mm -hmm. So a German Shepherd is not meant to look like a Rottweiler or a big beefy Mastiff or, you know what I mean? Or like a, like a bully or something. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be a lean dog, mm -hmm. lean and powerful dog. So. So M Luke nine is asking, how can, how can you tell if puppies already have hip dysplasia? Um, I think bunny hopping's a, a, a sign. So if they can't walk upstairs properly, they may bunny hop or may bunny hop when they're walking sometimes with puppies i think their hips can fly out a little bit as they walk they might like puppies are silly and wonky regardless because they're developing their all limbs and whatever but i think there are a few telltale telltale sound um sorry getting me words mixed up here uh, there's a few signs that 
there, there could be. I think bunny hopping is the is the main one. Um, yeah, but I think just trying to avoid it by going to a reputable breeder, I think, is the best option at the start. Also, I was wondering about their ears. <clears throat> I see some German shepherds, what, puppies, you know, have one floppy ears and then others are uh, way up. What was Lucy like? And Yeah, so yeah. Lucy, weird as, since we got her about 10 weeks old, they were like rockets. They were just like a wolf, just straight up. Oh. They wouldn't budge. And everyone told us, because apparently with German Shepherd puppies ears, when they stand up, they'll fall back down again and then they'll come back up again. So, and that never happened with Lucy. She just had these giant ears that look like sails. Um, so yeah, we never had that problem, but I, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's a genetic thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope puppies sometimes with bent ears, it happens when people play too rough with them because the marrow is so, so the cartilage, sorry, is so is soft. I know it's a thing. People can damage puppies ears. Uh, that, that could be it. I'm not, I'm not sure. Or it could be a genetic thing. Mm-hmm. I had one um, person message me. She was really freaked out about her dog, about her mouse ears, because um, one of them was flopped down. And she's like, is there something wrong with my mouth? Like, what yeah. what's wrong with the ear? <laughs> send, send it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's like kind of a muscle, right? I mean, I don't know. But... Well, I suppose it's connected to muscle tissue. Yeah, it makes sense. It's yeah. got and when they yeah. flap down, yeah, it's got to work it. So M. Luke yeah. responds, my guy's half German Shepherd and half Mally Dutch. His hairs were up now at four months. They are back down, so I'm waiting for them to come back. Okay. Wow. So That'd be a weapon of a dog. Fun. Nice, nice mix. All right. Yeah. Now I, I'm, I'm going to pay attention to the questions. I'm just chatting with you, Zach, so I, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. haven't even been looking at the comments, but... Anywho, um, oh, and what do you feed Lucy? What do we feed Lucy? So we feed Lucy, she's a bit of a mixed diet, but she's on a staple kibble. Now I'm sure we're going to have some raw feeding warriors jump on there and tell me I'm killing my dog and whatever, <laughs> but it's, um, I'm a big believer and there's no one right diet. There's a lot of really good diets you can have your dog on. Um, but I'm, I'm open to everything. She does eat a little bit of raw. I have her on a staple kibble. And cooked chicken, she, when she's good, she occasionally gets, you know, if we're having a couple of eye fillet steaks, we'll just throw one on for her as well. And she'll have that with a kibble. But, but my main thing is to have her on a, a really high quality stable kibble so she gets all the macro, micronutrients. And then we just complement it with a bit of raw, a bit of cooked. And we kind of like to trial a few different things here and there. But, yeah, one thing the vet told me there's there's because I, I was I got really caught up in the in the raw feeding thing for a bit. Like I felt like I was doing the wrong thing by not having her on raw. And the the vet told me he said it was quite a compliment. Lucy's one of the most healthiest German shepherds he's ever seen. So what you're doing is 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 not wrong. Um, raw feeding is just a, a specific type of diet. And he said that you know like he said the best way to look at it is the Olympic Games, for instance. We get all these athletes from all over the world. They're all at the peak physical condition, but they're all on different diets. Mm-hmm. It's culture. So he said, look at it that way. You know, there's no right or wrong way to get ready. Mm-hmm. So um, that's why I kind of look at Don't get caught up in the hype of the raw feeding thing. I think it's great. And one day I might go full raw feeding, um, mm-hmm. just not at the moment. Yeah, the raw feeding, I'm always so impressed by the people that do put so much time into cooking, yeah. like, you know. It's crazy, man. Milk, it's crazy. The egg and the steak and the yeah giblets and it's it's a production so it is so, it is i think if i do go down that route i'll just go like a meal prep company yeah just, it is, it's just yeah expensive. yeah yeah and do you have what about, on um like chicken beef duck do you yeah yeah so she's on like some chicken breast beef bit of pork um whatever and i kind of go between like a bit of raw bit of cooked um, just, just so she's exposed to kind of everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's just always supplemented with a kibble. So Ava Lamb 62 is asking, is there anything Lucy is scared of? Um, just recently, she discovered a fear of loaves of bread. What? Random. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like the only person <laughs> afraid. Well, I'm afraid of carbs too. No. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a girl thing, I think. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, so it was weird. It was a random thing that just happened recently. A uh, loaf of bread dropped down and she just got a fright. And now when I, whenever I pull the bread out, she's like, oh, Dad, I don't like that bread. So, Is it like French bread, like a, a nice baguette or like in the nah, No, just a loaf of like a normal crappy white loaf of bread like yeah it was just it was so random it was so weird because up until then i was like so like yeah lucy's not afraid of anything because you know she's been go she goes into the city she goes on trams and trains and the ferry and she's been exposed to so much loud noises cars backfiring you know i can have her off lead in these situations and you know, have her at the heel and she listens to every word i say not not i'm not afraid of a thing and then randomly in in the house the safest place in the world a loaf of bread drops on the ground and she's like holy shit that's so Rika would just pounce on it and just probably try to eat the whole loaf so yeah not afraid of carbs yeah (laughs) no so um ej1122 is asking how old are y'all's dog so how old's lucy yeah how old's lucy uh, she is two and a half now. And Rika is so, seven months. Seven months. Seven wow. Months. How, how, what's, how heavy will Rika be as a fully grown well, female Well, females are normally 40 to 60 pounds, but she's super small. So we're thinking like maybe another 10 pounds. Um, wow. She was the run for litter, so. Yeah. She's like a little pocket rocket. We say. Yeah. <laughs> He's tiny. So I'm I'm just scrolling well, up and looking at um, the comments because I wasn't paying attention. Malinois Chronicles was on a hike with my Mal and a man tried to walk around us on higher ground. My dog took this as a threat and instinct. Oh, I thought it was a question. Hi, Malinois Chronicles, if you're still here. Hi, Shepherds Daily. A Mal Dutch is a GSD on meth times a thousand. Do you think this is true? Did you hear the comment? Uh, look, I, I'm not really an expert in, in even German Shepherds or any, I'm just a dog owner. I'm just a German Shepherd owner. Um, that's what I've heard. Like I know Dutchies and, and males are, are pretty hardcore dogs. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that that's what they're saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Ava Lamb 62, is Lucy behaved at the groomers or the vets? Yeah, Lucy's super behaved. Um, she she has this mad crush on the vet there, so she she loves it. She didn't know she she gets free treats because she doesn't get any free treats from me. So she knows going to the vet for her is a great experience. So she gets photos, she gets photos of the vet nurses and Aww. whatever, and she gets treats and all the attention. So oh. she loves it. The groomers, I I do the majority of her grooming, um, just because I'm here, so I might as well do it. Do and she's cool. Question? She's Clipper nails. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do very occasionally though, because being in the city, there's a lot of concrete. It's kind of naturally filed down. But yeah, I do clip them and she's like pretty cool with it. That's good. So yeah. What about Riker? Do you clip hers? We don't because it's the pavement that files them down. Yeah, yeah. Riker has dew claws and they were supposed to be removed. Um, we dropped her off at the vet and the vet was supposed to do the removal and uh, cut to six hours later when I picked her up, the vet didn't do anything, didn't remove them. And yeah. So he wanted to wait until she gets spayed and then they would do the dew claws and spay at the same time. Mm, mm. Is Lucy spayed? Yeah, yeah, she spayed. She got spayed at um, gee, just over six months. I think so. So pretty young. Um, and that's what we were told at the time by the vet. So we just kind of did it. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, so yeah, I think that it's another topic where people are like really on the fence with. Yeah. Some people say don't do it for the first two years. Other people like wait till they're a year old. The vet says six months. I don't know. Yeah, who do you listen to? Yeah. But um, I, yeah. A lot. I, I heard that if the dog is um, has cancer in a history of cancer, then they should get the spay or neutered before the first heat. Um, but if they're small, like little Rika, definitely wait until after the first heat, close to the second heat. And that's what our mm. vet said. Mm. Okay, mm. RTC Fitness says, what are you currently training Lucy to do now? 
What am I currently training Lucy to do now? Jesus. Um, that's quite a lot. Nothing specific. I think at the moment, just getting in more uh, cool photo positions, I suppose, like getting her to, yeah, yeah. I suppose every, every day is kind of like a little training session because we're always taking some nice photos and things. So she's, she's always listening and always really charged up. So, um, oh, actually, actually, I'll take that back. Not destroying the drone, getting a use of the drone. <laughs> We're getting there. Okay. We're getting there. For the people that don't, yeah. that don't know about your YouTube channel, can you tell us a little bit about it and then also talk about your new toy? Okay. So, yeah, so at least you got a little YouTube channel. Um, it started off with kind of like just little tips and tricks with owning a German Shepherd, just some basic stuff. It's, it's nothing technical. But, um, and then it's also pretty much built up of a lot of our daily vlogs, adventures and things. And it's, it's more or less I'm building a channel around just, just doing more with your dog. Get out and about, see the world with your pup. You know, don't leave your best friend tied up in the backyard. Um, so, yeah, it's just all our little adventures. That's, that's all it is. You know, we see all the science. You know, pro a lot of people probably have seen the, 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 the picturesque side of Sydney before on postcards or calendars and things like that. So where we go around a few of the iconic spots and then we, we, we go up into the bush and, and just do it. Yeah. And it's cool. Cause we get to implement a lot of our training and things and try to show like real world scenarios. Why having a, a dog that listens to you was really important as well. Um, I think I demonstrate a lot of that in the city where I will have Lucy off lead. A lot of people think, fuck, why are you doing that? But um, you know, if, if you've got control of your dog, well then it's not a, not an issue and it's not harming anyone. But, um, but yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It puts my training into practice. It, it builds a relationship between Lucy and I. And yeah, it's kind of what it's about. It's just like a kind of a, a lifestyle dog channel. Mm -hmm. well, we it's the best way it. to look at it. And we love yeah, thanks. watching, following along your adventures. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And the drone was the, the new addition to that. So that's just getting Lucy to, it's a, cause she loves chasing birds. Um, it's that bit of that prey drive, I think coming out. Now this thing's like a bird on steroids. So, yeah. Okay, so um, Vicar, the Belgian Malinois, is in Sydney, and she's asking, where's the best places in Sydney to go that allow dogs? The best places to Sydney? Okay, well, I think mm, one of my favourites is the Coogee Bay, the Coogee Beach off -lead Dog Park. That's pretty cool. It's on one of the videos that I just did. That's really nice. It's very scenery. Uh, lots of it's very picturesque uh beautiful it's kind of like cliff faces and they're not too high so hopefully your male won't jump off into the water you're going to be going for a swim but um it's and it's it's on overlooks onto a big nice oval uh there's another place I mean, there's lots of little places around sydney to be honest you just gotta centennial park's a fantastic place that's probably a really good place if you're trying to get used to off lead obedience kind of thing it's yeah, it's quite, it's a safe area if you're not 100% with your dog. So that's a great place. Um, and Cronella, the Cronella Dog Beach is fantastic. It's probably my three favourites. Um, has Lucy, have you guys ever gone to Bondi Beach or met the lifeguards there? Someone's asking. Um, no, we haven't. We haven't actually gone there and met the lifeguards there. No. Okay. When are you getting Lucy a brother or sister? Oh, well, probably not for a little while. I, I, I do want to. I was actually even considering a male um, down the track. Yeah, yeah, join the dark side. Um, one day, look, it could be a couple of years' time away yet because we're, we're about to, to buy a, an apartment in Sydney. Like, so I think um, you know, Lucy's apartment trained perfectly. She's meant to, it's her domain, but... I think bringing up a male in that environment too would be pushing the boundaries a little bit. So I wait till I have a, I have a house and a yard for that. Mm -hmm. That's smart. Okay. I have a question about Lucy's shedding because this is the one thing that I love about Rika is she doesn't shed a lot. How much mm. does Lucy shed? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I think I've done some YouTube videos where, yeah, so she shed, well, some of the shedding that's happened recently we've discovered has been like an overtime kind of thing, but her shedding has 
yeah, it's ruined one of my MacBooks. All the hair has gone underneath the shit into one of my MacBooks. It actually, my Jeep Wrangler had to go in for a service because her hair had clogged up the air filters and completely stuffed up all of the, um, the, the air conditioning system. And just stuff like that, you know, just basics. Can you so. braid her hair? Is it long enough to braid? Uh, no, it's not. She's a plush coat. So she's kind of in between a long and a short. Uh. Okay. Um, yeah, but, but like we do, we do, she gets regular, regular firminations and things, but it's just crazy sometimes. It's, it's actually very manageable most of the year, but when it's shedding season, it's just on steroids. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And are you using the firminator um, every day or every few days? What's that like? It kind of ranges. It kind of ranges. I've actually discovered a pattern where if, she does a lot more swimming than usual. It actually, it's almost like it's a natural like exfoliator kind of thing. It really regulates her fur for me. But if she doesn't go swimming for a week, I find she has a massive build up, and I find myself fermenting probably every second day. Whereas if she's swimming a lot, maybe once or twice a week. And how difficult is it to bathe Lucy? Oh, she's cool. She loves it. So she'll just jump in the shower with me. So... <laughs> Yeah, literally, it, it's crazy. It's actually, it's actually a YouTube video. It was it was filmed very carefully, so it, it, anyone doesn't get too much. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, it's 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 it happens heaps, man. She loves it. So like, we'll get back to the beach because I normally get just as wet and sandy as her, and then Flick's just like, right, both of you in the shower, and then we'll march in there, and and she'll just jump in. She'll jump straight in, and so she'll have a rinse down. So she'll get a fresh water rinse down all the time. Um. And if I'm in the shower, we just do it then and there too. She loves it. But yeah. an actual soapy bath is probably only about three to five times a year. Um, because washing them with soap too much is really bad for their fur. Um, wait, can you go into that a little bit more? Why is it so bad for their fur? Uh, it just strips their oils, strips all their, their healthy oils in, in their fur. And I think the same thing can happen to us if we wash our hair too much. Right. Um, are you concerned about ticks, please? Yeah, so we've got some nasty bastards over here, paralysis ticks, and my nemesis. So they're, they're, they're everywhere in Australia. Um, I'm not sure where you – do you guys have them where you are? Yeah, we do. So, oh, yeah, horrible. Yeah. Yeah, so so she's on all of her protective agents. Now, you get some crazy hippies, get out there, and yeah, you don't need to use all this pharmaceutical stuff that it gives you. It's, it's a scam. It's going to kill your dog, like. I'm sure maybe one in a million dogs, it probably doesn't work out for, but the uh, I would rather take that risk than having a paralysis tick you can't find because once that little bastard's on, your dog, it's a, you don't find it, it is game over. Mm-hmm. Well, so she's just on your neck, your neck's guard and stuff like that. But I find as well it's important after some of our adventures because Lucy's got a really thick mane and it's kind of the point where they like to attach onto. So I always go through all of her mane area. Mm-hmm. And just just to double check, it's, yeah. So um, M Luke Nine is asking, do you only wash Rika three to five times a year? Too no, we wash Rika like once every two weeks, once a week. We wash her because L A is like we hike a lot. Like she'll get yeah she gets dirty. Like we we get in there, and so she yeah. So we wash her. We um give her her flea tick um little. Uh, little cleanser when she but we mm. didn't introduce that cleanser until like I think it was I think she was four months um, before that we were using baby oil super gentle just to um, wow the, uh, dirt off her and she's she's really good in the bath she used to go nuts like she used to hop out and like just freak out and like zoom around after yeah yeah bubble. yeah but now she's super chill with it and I think it's just that's good a happy thing yeah does she get to swim much is she a big swimmer so she well actually she's great she she loves the beach it's funny we don't live close to the beach we're like an hour drive um mm. from, from the closest beach like we were just in Malibu and yeah, she just dives in, like, just fearless. Like she, there were a group mm. of um, golden retrievers, and she just, boom, just jets right in. She loves it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, like, the cutest thing. But, yeah, she's she's got to get to Lucy's level. 
<laughs> yeah, she she's on her way. <laughs> oh, power power swimmer. Okay. Yeah. So Ava Lamb asks, who is the who is the first TikTok dog that Lucy met? Was it Heidi, Harley, Manaya, Phoenix, or someone else? Oh, lots of shout outs. Right so, <laughs> so we were actually all friends before TikTok ever came along. We all met on Instagram um, a couple of years ago, and we we all kind of got our dogs mostly just around the same time um, with this little Sydney group. So we all kind of found each other on Instagram at around about a thousand followers and we all kind of grew together and we all live within 10 minutes of each other. It's pretty cool. That's and then we were, Oh, Hey, have you checked out TikTok? Let's all jump on that bandwagon. So that's so cool. Yeah. It's so nice to have community like not just the dogs, but also people that share the love for social media and creating content. It's awesome. It's awesome. Especially when you get to build the relationships like, in person as well, because we've all got, you get all these people from different walks of life. You know, you've got like people who are military, you've got doctors, you've got mums, you've got artists, and we're all kind of got this one thing in common and this one passion. And it, it's really cool, man. It's really cool. You meet some people, you, you, yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. We're, we're lucky for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh Hi, Julie. Hi, Evita. I love to see Lucy. Her face is hidden behind her dad's mom, her dad's arm. Oh, sorry. Place. Aw, hi, Lucy. Hi. Hey, pretty girl. Hi. She's just chilling. That's that. See, I could leave her. I could leave her here. She wouldn't move. If I just get up and go, she'll sleep there, and I'll, I could go out, go to the gym, come back. She'll still be here. She'll just chill. I can't say the same thing for Rika. <laughs> uh, uh, what does lucy do to make you laugh oh a lot of random stuff uh her head tilting's crazy oh, hold on, so hold on a second you, you you answer that let me get right back so i think she went up uh, so lucy will random randomly start head tilting all the time it's crazy and she's yeah there's a couple of tiktok videos i occasionally do capture it We see a male on the loose. What time is it? It's 5.54. This is usually my cue that, that uh, yeah, you. I've gone for a, a little too long. Once like the leaves of vicinity, <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's tapped out. That's, um, that's all good, all good. Wait, is there anything else we should chat about while I have you here live in the flesh? Uh, when are you coming to Australia? Oh. When are we... When are you and Dave coming to have coffee with Flick and I? How's oh that? Oh my gosh, we obviously post pandemic. Yeah, you know, Dave actually lived in Australia for like six months, so he's itching to get back. So, awesome. Let's say Twenty. Who the heck knows when this will be over? But I mean, end of 2021, 2022. We want to. Wow. Yeah. So. Be cool. We might even have a mail by then. Who knows? <laughs> Lucy might have a brother. Imagine that. Yes. Oh, well, you guys have to keep me posted if that is yeah, we'll do. actually something that you're serious about. Yeah, definitely. Uh, legit, legit. 100%. That would be so cool. Well, awesome. But yeah, anything else? Any other? Yeah, I think that's, uh, there was actually this one, I think there was a, a male on here. I think it's called Lucy or is it Lucy the male? Were they from Australia, Sydney? Um, Lucy the Malligator. When are you meeting for a play date? Oh, Lucy the Malligator. Um, oh, when are, when are we meeting for a play date? In 2022, because we're in Los Angeles and Zach and Lucy are in Sydney. <laughs> if, you didn't, if you didn't get that. <laughs> yeah. It um, could have could happened sooner, but, you know, it's the world. The world, exactly. The world. Anyway, uh, well, we better let you guys go then. So, well, so little nice Miss to see can... you. I yeah, really thanks for having us on your live. Yeah, of course. Bye, Lucy. We'll talk to see you ya. soon. See you guys. And guys, talk soon. And adios. And if you guys aren't following Lucy Bye. Lane, the Queen of Balmain on YouTube, please go and follow because their adventures are epic.
All right. Ciao. Uh, thanks. See ya.